you were dead once, you'll die again. And when you die, you'll sleep 1,000 years, soul, body, and spirit, awaiting the resurrection and awaiting the final judgment of your life. Uh, someone said, I just don't think I'll learn anymore. I don't think I, if all of that's going to come about, I just think I'll stop learning so God won't judge me. No, you've got a problem. If you've received the Holy Spirit in your life, you are alive. You're in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is written there. And uh, you, you can't magically wish yourself out of that life that God gave you because you are, you are responsible. I'm responsible. I'm accountable. I must obey the Lord. I must serve the Lord. I must because I am. I am a debtor. I am uh, in debt to that which he gave me. So uh, I don't want to suffer the second death. On such the second death hath no power. Why? Because you're the children of the uh, first resurrection. And you can't die anymore. Neither can they die anymore. They that are accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, they neither marry, that's over. That really racks up the Mormon church, doesn't it? Where they're teaching. They teach that families are going to continue in heaven. There's going to be children born in heaven. That uh, there's going to be uh, marriages in heaven. And they're going to go on living in heaven, just like they lived here on this earth. Uh, so that takes care of Joseph Smith and his teachings in the Book of Mormon, because it's not scriptural. It's not according to the Word of God. It may be according to the Book of Mormon, but it's not according to the Word of God. See? And, and so when you look at this, Brother Ferris, that's the second death. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. One other uh, thing that I want to give you is the book of Luke, since we're over, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Jude. My mind flips into Luke, it should be in Jude. Um, but uh, in, in, the, in the book of Jude, here we have another instance or example of the, the second death. Go down to verse uh, 12. Speaking of those that deny the Lord, their brute beast, you read the description of who he's talking about here in verse 10, 11. And he said, these are spots. They've gone in the way of Cain, they ran greedily after Arabelle, and perished in the gates of Abel So they're in rebellion against God. These are spots, they stand out, in your feast of charity. Your feast of charity was the church in worship. Your feast. We have our feast days here. Wednesday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. We observe the feast of the Passover. Yeah, we observe the feast of harvest, feast of the Engad. We we observe, uh, you know, all those feasts, those seven feasts of Israel, is kept by the church in the spiritual, not in the natural. Christ is our Passover, so we keep the Passover. Christ passes over us. Uh, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday night. We're observing the feast. Paul said, therefore let us keep the feast. Second Corinthians, First Corinthians 5, brother. Let us, therefore let us keep the feast. You know, we, we keep the feast. So the feast of charity, our divine love of God, is kept in the church. Um, feast of the tabernacle. You know, harvest, in gathering, and all those feasts that Israel kept. But he said, they now, these people that are rebellious, 
backslidden in the church. They feed themselves right with you. They worship. They sing. They praise God right with you. They keep the feast. You know, a lot of people keep the feast of charity with their spots. They stand out because they're keeping the feast, but they're not obeying the word of God. They're keeping the feast. That is, they come and they, they feast. Uh, the Spirit of God's wonderful. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel good. The Spirit of God will lift you up. The Spirit of God will will just cause you to be, just feel the best of you. Exuberance, you know. Uh, so they keep the feast. Feast, more than one. But they're spots. They stand out because they're not walking in the holiness and purity and in obedience. Now, I, I feel for them. I don't want to be one myself. I pray that God will keep me from being a spot because I have a desire to keep the feast, and I enjoy keeping the feast. I love to come to worship. I love to come to the Passover of Christ. I love to come uh, and talk about the feast of end gathering, the feast of harvest. I, I love that. Uh, but, but I can have leaven. And I can keep it with leaven, uh, adulteration of my spirit. So I wanted to show you this now, and I'll conclude. Did you have your hand up, Brother Lee, while I go there? Uh, just a little quick thought. But All right, I'll, go ahead. I was just going to put for that scripture. The rain, the rain does fall on the just as well as the unjust. We take scripture. So it does. So it can fall on them. Yes. Just, just a That's good. Thank you for bringing in Matthew 5. and. Uh, the closing of Matthew, the fifth chapter there, I believe that is, but the rain falleth on the just and the unjust. So the feast is good for the just and the unjust. You know, the, the, the unjust will enjoy the feast just as much as the just will. Sometimes they'll enjoy it more because their conscience is not condemned. They don't have anything about them that feels any recrimination for what may be going on, you know, underneath the surface, underneath the cover. Uh, so they may enjoy it more than me that I live I'm, I'm aware of the word I'm aware of the judgment seat I'm always aware that when I'm keeping the feast I'm also at the judgment seat and I'm being judged while I'm keeping the feast you know so that kind of balances me I do get carried away but I remember I'm coming back down and I've got a deal coming back down as well as going up when I get carried away in the spirit I know I'm coming back down. And that which goes up must come down. The law, you know. I mean, I get so high in God, but I must come down. Like I taught the church yesterday, there is going to be temptation. Soon after you have the glory of God, there's going to be temptation. It won't be long. It won't be long after the blessing will come temptation or a trial or a test or a problem. It will come just as automatically as the sun rising. It will be there, and you'll confront that temptation. So you have to have more than just an exhilaration, exuberance. You have to have steady feet to walk on and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace for you to be able to handle that. And these that are spots in our feast of charity, they're carried about on winds, winds of doctrine, false doctrines, trees, we are, they are, I hope I'm not one of these, but I could be, whose fruit withered, my fruit doesn't live, then I'm without fruit, have no fruit, twice dead, there that is, see that, second death, twice dead, first and second death, right there, you know, twice dead, I was dead, now I die again, and my soul died because I'm a tree whose fruit withered and, a, and a, uh, the wind carries me about and I'm a spot. So I'm not a very, in a very good position right here. 